Hey everybody, uh, this is Matt here and we're going to discuss how to do a ball bounce using Adobe After Effects Creative Cloud 2015. Uh, let's go ahead and watch kind of what we're going to accomplish here today. So we're going to do a simple ball bounce using the principles of timing and spacing. And we're going to start by um, going ahead and downloading a ball. I went ahead and uh, Google searched a ball and uh, I went ahead and made a composition with that ball. To make a composition, all you do is simply drag it down to the composition window and it will create a ball the size of your composition. Uh, so let's get started here. For this for, uh, animation, we're going to need <clears throat> one minute and two seconds of animation. So I'm going to go and create a new composition or hit Command N on my keyboard. And I'm going to make sure I have that uh, couple frames here that I'm looking for. And we'll call this ball animation. There we go. And once I have my ball animation, I have my stage set up. Uh, so now I need to populate my stage with the characters. Now I could just drag in the um, ball PNG asset, but I've gone ahead and I always make a habit of making compositions with all of my assets. So I'm gonna drag the ball down to this stage. I'm gonna hit S for scale, and I'm going to scale the ball down uh, quite a bit and place the ball in the top quadrant. So maybe 50%, that's S for scale. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my timing sheet that I've downloaded off the internet. And I'm gonna scale this up so you guys can see and make it so the numbers hit the ground. And this is a good uh, thing to follow if you're not familiar with timing and spacing. Timing is the areas uh, on the extreme points of the ball where spacing is the space between the individual frame numbers. Um, frames that are closer together appear to be slower and frames that are further apart appear to be further apart. You'll notice we have nice arcs here, arcs being another principle of animation out of the 12 principles. Um, and we're gonna just use this as a reference guide. We're not gonna follow it completely. It'll just give, give us a good guide to follow. So let's get started. Now, the way I like to animate is, first I'm gonna lock down my, my reference sheet but I like to um, start just by doing up and down. So I can do this a few different ways. Right now we have 7, 17, 25, and 31. Those are all ground points for our sphere. Now our ground points are very important. So before I animate, I'm gonna hit Y, and I'm gonna move my pivot point, and then hold Shift, or actually probably Command, to the bottom of my ball. And that's gonna make sense as we go forward. Go back to the selection tool, so my pivot point was moved, and I'm gonna start with the ups and downs. So I'm gonna hit P for position, and I know on frame seven, uh, it's gonna be on the ground. So I also already put some rotation into that. So I'm gonna go to frame seven, and it's about right here, see my timeline, and I'm gonna set a keyframe, and I'm gonna go to frame 17, and I can actually copy and paste these keyframes, Command C, Command V, frame 25, command V, and then frame 31, which is right there, command V. All right, now that I have those, um, I have all my ground points, let's go to the high points. So on frame one, um, which is, for our sake, we'll just use frame zero, it'll be easier, the ball is gonna be at its highest point. So it's gonna be at the very top of the screen at the very highest point. Um, we can see then on frame 12, which is down the road here, uh, the ball will be at its second highest point. So I'm gonna go and stretch it to the second highest point. On frame uh, 21, which is roughly right here, it'll be at its third highest point, and I'm just lining it up to here. And you notice these are the in-between keyframes. Um, and then we have on frame 28, which is right on the money here, the ball is roughly here. So if we play this back by hitting our space bar, it's gonna run through a RAM preview, and this gives us the ball bounce we're looking for. Now, if you're wondering why I have animation and rotation, I went ahead inside my ball, and I set some keyframes for rotation. So I can turn those off, and we can have, there we go, no rotation for now. We'll get to that in a second. So right now the ball has the right timing, but it doesn't do very well in spacing. So what we're gonna to need to do is adjust the keyframes for the x-axis. So with our x-axis, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the, the ball here, 
and we're going to select the ball and go to our graph editor. And in our graph editor, we'll be able to visualize the spacing of the ball a little more accurately. I'm going to go ahead and highlight the word position and fit all my views on the graph. And I'm going to go and navigate to separate dimensions. So by hitting X, Y, Z, now we have access to the X, which is left and right, and the Y positions, which is up and down. I'm going to go ahead and frame that, and I want to delete not the first and the last keyframe, but I want to delete all the keyframes in between the actual animation. And that's going to help me immensely when I set some keyframes here. So on the very first keyframe on X, I'm going to move the ball to its start position. I'm then navigate to the end, and on the very last keyframe, I'm going to stretch and move the ball to its last position over here. And this gives us a rough estimate of this. So what does this say? Well, this basically is showing that our X position is going from left to right, so it's changing the X data points. So this is the data points. These are representing these points over here. And then on the bottom, this represents our timeline. And so it's very important that we kind of understand those elements. And what I like to do, I'll put some ease on it later, but I like to straighten that curve out just so I'm getting nice straight lines as I go forward. Now let's look at the Y position. Right now we do not have these beautiful arcs that our demo described. We need to make those. So to do that, I'm going to highlight the Y and I'm going to use my ease keys. And that's those that these three buttons right here are your ease keys. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to adjust my arc to best fit the weight of the ball. And these are I take these Bezier handles or these tangents and I just mildly adjust them and sometimes I'll use uh, the, the arcs to get kind of a preview. And you can hold shift and it will keep them straight. And we're going to just then hit the right one because we want a curve on the right. And we're going to mimic the shapes that we see in our template. Now, as you get better at this, you will not need a template to follow. So just be aware of that. You'll eventually just use your eyes and you'll be able to kind of follow along on what you need to have. And again, notice I have one here, but I don't have one on this side. So this dot shows a curve or a tangent shooting out to the right. I can turn that on and I can grab it and pull it down. This is a very basic ball bounce. Do the same thing. This time I'll put it on the left. Pull it down, make sure my arcs are consistent. Again, I can go back and adjust as need be. And I kind of work my way down my arc and until I'm at the very, very bottom of my curve, which doesn't have a ton of curved space, but you can see overall when I frame this, it has a very nice fluid action. So let's look at the spacing now. Let's hide our, our template so we can see what happens. Now we're getting some spacing. Notice it has a lot more um, exaggerated feel. So again, I'm going to make it maybe a little heavier in the beginning. I'm going to adjust these. There we go. Let's go back in here and I'm going to pull these out. And again, I'm just adjusting the arcs. I could also pull them up slightly if need be. And at any point, if I don't like the way they look, I have tangent options here at the bottom. And by hitting those, I can either reset them or I can change the distribution of the tangent to kind of give me a uh, fresher look. And so that's kind of the important part. Now I like that arc a lot better. Let's see what it looks like. So I'll hit spacebar, let it run through. Much better. And that's the basic principles of a ball bounce. Uh, if I click away, you'll see I have two keyframes on left and right, and I have multiple keyframes on the Y position. And the reason I moved my pivot point at any point, if I wanted to do, for instance, a squash and stretch, I could do so. So if I hit scale and I unlock my scale, I can work with squash and stretch now and set some keyframes along the path. And we'll go ahead and, and kind of work through that in a second. Um, the first thing though is let's hit R for rotation and let's rotate this ball um, to kind of go with the path itself. So I'm gonna just orient it or tilt, tilt it a specific way. So we'll start from zero up here. So let's hit zero, set our keyframe. 
Let's uh, then hit U on our keyboard because now we can know where the bottom is. So the ball is going to hit and it's going to be tilted roughly like this until it hits. And then when it hits, we'll go back to zero. And After Effects says automatic keyframing so we don't have to worry too much. And then as it comes up, we'll tilt it this way. When it goes in the middle, which is this keyframe here, we'll be back to zero. And then we kind of rinse and repeat the process. And this, at this point, because we have our timing already set, becomes extremely easy to kind of go and set keyframes. And we know we have zero here, so we can obviously copy this keyframe and paste that keyframe if need be. We can also, again, rotate it to the way we want it. And now we're getting a nice tilt to that sphere. Paste that one and go up one frame, rotate it this way a little bit, and vice versa on each side. So we'll do this, paste the zero, and then our final keyframe will be kind of facing this way. So now let's look at what we have. Let's go ahead and run through it. It's very subtle, but we do have a subtle rotation. Now, if I wanted that ball to rotate as well from the center, I would simply double click on the ball and I would set a rotation keyframe in here. So I can set a few rotations from here to there. So you can see it's gonna rotate. And now I would have that. I've rotated my ball backwards, but you can kind of get the idea. So we have two different types of rotation on one ball. And I'm not ready to kind of play with that yet, so I'll take that off for now. Uh, let's look at scale. Uh, in scale, I've gone ahead and I've undone my numbers, but I know my scale needs to be at 100% at specific points. For instance, here at the, uh, the top of our keyframes, it's always gonna be 100%. I'm hitting this diamond to set similar keyframes. So we'll make sure that we hit that diamond on all our points at the peaks. And we'll do it again here. And actually the last one will be 100% as well. Uh, and now we can play with squash and stretch. So as the ball falls, we can push it in and pull it out. So that ball will gain distance. And when it hits the ground, we're going to compress it and pull it out. So now we have a nice squash and stretch. And what we can do is just duplicate these keyframes as we go. So I'm gonna actually take them both and when it hits the ground here, I'm going to duplicate them. And I just need to duplicate the squash on that one, so, or the stretch, pardon me. So I'll pull it here, Command C to paste it, goes back to zero stretches back down. When it hits the ground, we grab our stretch or keyframe, our little squash keyframe, I should say, and we pull it down there. And then we're gonna grab one of these and paste it. So let's grab the stretchy one again. There it is. And we'll, we'll kind of pull down the stretchiness at this point. We don't want it as stretchy because it's kind of dissipating and dying out. But it hits, there we go, copy that paste that, cool, we like this one, so we'll line it up, looks good there, we'll paste it, and this one we're going to kind of start taking it out a little bit, so maybe we'll get back to more normalized squash and stretch because it's dying out, and then there we go. This one's a little bit weak, so let's Pull it up a little bit because we're again it's dying out as we go and now we have a nice squash and stretch so let's play this back and see not bad so we have the nice tilt of the ball coming down kind of changing directions fluidly as we go and kind of rotating outward again now i can maybe hit my uh, keyframes here so i'm going to set them to zero set the rotation and then we'll move the ball Maybe we'll move it three rotations. Let's start with that um, in the time frame. So a little trick I like to use is I put my keyframes out here, go here, and 
the cursor kind of goes where you need it to be. So that's the beginning and the end. And now we have a nice rotation that doesn't look too wacky and it keeps all their order of transformation in play. So this is kind of building up on the uh, ball bounce, but also using different pivot points to kind of work its way out. All right, so what can we do from here? Well, now I'm gonna go back into my position category and select X, and now I'm gonna add some eases on X. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of ease out my, my curves just slightly. And then this is a very tricky one because you wanna make sure that everything kind of smoothly plays out. And let's see what we get here. Yeah, it kind of slows out there at the end. So that's a really nice ball bounce. The only thing it's missing is actually motion blur. So next to the ball, I'm gonna go ahead and click the motion blur button, which is found right here, and that will activate it. And if I wanna see it in my timeline, I will enable the motion blur button up here. And now when I play it back, there you go. We have a nice little ball bounce. Uh, to render this, I will go to composition and I can add it to my media encoder and run it through there. Um, or I can save as and uh, save my file uh, for future animation purposes. Hopefully you guys learned something about the basic ball bounce in Adobe After Effects 2015. Um, give yourself, uh, uh, give your ball bounce a shot and see what you can come up with. Thanks.